Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I do unboxings, mostly lifestyle subscription boxes, but also some stationery, books, beauty, jewelry, travel, home decor, even a dash of Disney. So if you enjoy unboxings, I do hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so that you find out whenever I post new videos, announce giveaways, or go live. As always, if you're already subscribed, thank you again so much for being here and welcome back. Today I have another box from a once Upon a Book Club, and you can tell from the pink box that this is their adult subscription. They also have a young adult subscription that comes in a green box every month. They do all kinds of limited edition boxes as well. Most recently, I purchased their Bridgerton box, but it has three books in it and corresponding gifts, so I have not dived into it quite yet, but I definitely will. And when I do, I will review it here on the channel. In the past, I've gotten their Advent box, one of their Halloween boxes, and they do have all of those available again this year. So if you are looking for a one-time experience, experience with Once Upon a Book Club, you definitely can do that as well. And sometimes they have past boxes available in their shop. Now this subscription is $49.99 per month. That does include the shipping. It used to be $34.99 plus $10 in shipping, so they did raise the price by $5. But included is not only the book that you'll be reading, but also three to five gifts that correspond with the pages in the book, which makes it a really fun reading experience. A quote card, usually a bookmark. Sometimes they'll have a note from the author which does again add to the reading experience as well as some discussion questions if you really want to make it more like a book club. Now I am super duper behind. This is actually the May box. In fact, since I received this box, they have moved away from labeling the boxes by month and instead they just go by the hint for the box. Because when the box is coming out, they don't actually tell you the title. They give you a pretty lengthy, not necessarily synopsis, but it does give you a good idea of what the topic is. So if you want to skip it or maybe switch to the young adult subscription, for that month, you definitely can do that. Although there's some pretty good sleuths in their Facebook group who can usually figure out what the book is. Now I have a year subscriptions and again, I'm so far behind that I usually just kind of let it roll at this point because I do for this particular subscription because of the style of box that it is, I do actually like to read the book so that it makes a little more, more sense when I do share the gifts, the contents of the box with you. Now, if you're interested in subscribing, you can use the code Maui Noel 10 and that will save you 10%. As always, I will leave that information for you in the description box below. This, the hint I believe is Meta Moustache, which is the uh, one of the monikers of the character of the novel. And the novel, so if you don't want any spoilers, this is where you stop watching. The novel is A Betting Woman by Jenny L. Walsh, Walsh. And it is a historical fiction, which I love them. I always admire the research that goes into them. And I think it's really cool to get into the mind of a real person and sort of experience that time and their biography from different eyes. Um, sometimes obviously there's some more liberties taken depending on how much information is available about that character but I really enjoyed this it was just under 300 pages so it's enough to keep me uh, keep my attention wrapped for a good half day and I was able to finish it pretty quickly there were four gifts with this uh, particular book but let's go ahead and read a little bit about it it says, Born Simone Jules, reinvented as Eleanor Dumont and largely remembered as Madame Moustache, down to her last dollar and facing some unsavory options, Eleanor quick wits her way to a gambling table where she begins to deal 21, which is modern day blackjack. But the boom and bust of the gold rush stops for no, no one, nor do the challenges of a man's world. Eleanor learns she must fight for her livelihood, her self-worth, and most of all, for her legacy. So there is indeed a Madame Moustache uh, that is a part of the Wild West's history, which I just think it's so cool to learn about all these like trailblazing women. And uh, she did have to invent quite a bit from her uh, in terms of her history and where she came from, but I thought she did a really good job. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. I'll show you some of the other contents of the box. This, for example, is the uh, little bookmark that came along with it and the quote on there matches the quote card. Now, a lot of people like to collect these quote cards. I can see why. This one says, there wasn't much a woman could possess in this world, but we could we could surely keep our wits about this. I believe that quote came pretty early in the book. Now on the back we do have a handwritten note from the author which I thought was an awesome touch. So see it says 
Dear reader, I'm so excited that my newest novel, A Betting Woman, is in your box this month. I have the pleasure of being a storyteller of women throughout history, writing for both children and adults. I've written about a young girl in a World War II resistance group, about an American Revolutionary War heroine, and even about a famous and infamous female outlaw. Adding a story about the West's first female croupier has been so much fun, or like dealer, basically. When first researching Eleanor Dumont, I began with this rendering. I'm a very visual person and it immediately sparked my imagination. Who painted her? What role would this artist play? Eleanor is known for her card playing, yet here she was with dice. Why? What inspired her attire, her expression? These answers shape my novel, and I hope you have as much fun reading about this witty and tenacious woman as I did bringing her to life. Uh, please leave a review online after reading. So here is the image, and I didn't actually see this until after I was done with the book. So this is the version in color. Now, this was very surprising to me because in the book she is described as this very like diminu diminutive, very like small, almost childlike, tiny, like very feminine creature. And in this particular image, she looks much more like voluptuous and like a little bit, um, you know, she's only supposed to be like in her early 20s for most of like the good portion of the book, even though we kind of end with her in her mid 30s. So like this particular like drawing of her was just not what I imagined, even though they described this actual drawing in in the book. So I did it, did, it did appear in the book itself in black and white, but I was glad that it came so late in the novel because again, it just didn't like jive with what I imagined the uh, described painting looking like in when I was reading the book. And that's kind of one of the nice things. That's one of the reasons it's nice to read the book before you watch the movie, right? I could totally see this again being a movie. I think that they do a great job of choosing novels. It's always like a variety of things. Sometimes we'll get really like playful, like romantic comedy kind of things. And sometimes we'll get like something more like this where it is a historical fiction. I wasn't super excited about the gifts, I will tell you right off the bat in this particular box, and we'll talk about it as we go through. That is just, that is not to say that I don't usually find some of them beautiful or interesting or useful. Just this time around, it wasn't like my favorite interpretation, but I do think that the gifts have definitely gotten better in the last year and a half since I've been subscribed to the subscription. They did also include a signed uh, little book plate that we can put inside. Now we do usually get uh, paperbacks. I think on rare occasion have I gotten a hard cover book from Once Upon a Book Club, but that's fine. It also comes with a little uh, big sheet now that they include as a guide. So it does say right, again that that is the uh, kind of hint. That's how this box will be labeled, not as the May box, which it is, but rather as Madame Mustache or Mustache. Um, inside we have a conversation with Jenny L. Walsh. So they do that a lot. And then over here we have discussion questions and read along dates. Now when this box got sent to me, they were a little bit behind on their shipping. So I haven't ever done their read along dates or like their openings that they do over on Instagram. Instagram. One of these days I would do it. If any of you guys are subscribed and you would like to do that along with me sometime, that would be fun. On the back page this time they have the uh, rules of 21 or 21 or blackjack. So I thought that was nice and I liked this uh, historical image. I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be. It's definitely not her. So, um, so let's go ahead and get into it now. I'll show you what the rest of the box looks like so you can kind of see there. Everything's all packaged very nicely. They sometimes do like special packaging in boxes. I prefer when when they don't print the page numbers on the boxes so that in case I want to regift anything I don't like feel strange giving it to someone else where they're, they're like wondering why page 95 is written on something but we'll talk about that again as we go through now what I usually do is I will go ahead and read the excerpt that is associated with the gift and then we'll open up the gift together so again there were four gifts a couple of them came pretty close together. I believe the first one was on page 39. So let me just flip to that page because I usually leave the sticky notes in there. So this is what it looks like when you get to that page. There's this big sticky note that says open your gift. Now when I usually get the box, I will go through and kind of make sure that I have all of the gifts in there just in case, uh, especially because I am so behind. I have on occasion, I think maybe two times had things that like broke or were damaged and they were really great about replacing them. But I have had one thing that like spilled and so I just like to like double check and make sure, especially if I know I might not get to it for a couple of months. So this is page 39. So it says, uh, I smiled to myself between two of the men's scraggly faces, a mirror hung. I saw my smile. Life's timing was fortuitous because there I also saw the comforting likeness of my sister. Miss, a man asked. 
I picked him only to focus on. You will play? His smile showed a blackened tooth. Play with you? I wished for gloves as I palmed the deck. Do you see anyone else sitting here, monsieur, brandishing a set of cards? So she's a little sassy, and that's kind of how she like gets her name known, how she uh, reinvents herself. I did really like the backstory that the author created for for Simone Jules, or uh, Eleanor, who's like, she's Eleanor, I feel like, for most of the book. So here is what we got. It came in a little bag that does have page 39 printed on it. So again, kind of hard to like reuse that, but not surprising. We did get a deck of cards, but this is a very fancy deck of cards, which I think this may have been like my favorite gift this time around in all honesty. Um, I have plenty of playing cards. It's actually kind of been like a weirdly like popular thing. I feel like to get in subscription boxes lately, which is kind of cool because for a while I didn't have any and now I have an abundance, but this particular deck is pretty neat because it's very sleek uh so i'll show it to you it's on one side it's kind of like matte black i feel like this is like a magician's deck and then look how cool like the joker is it's in this like midnight blue and then the rest of the cards you guys are like this so i just thought that was really neat so let's move past our uh joker we have one in blue and one in gold and then for example like look at the king on this one so it's in gold and blue aren't those like really stunning i just think i feel like you would want to do like a craft or something with them but you can see there's gold for example and then there is blue for the hearts and then so instead of like reds and blacks we have uh gold and blue so i just thought that was really a neat way of doing the suits um and it looks really pretty as well so really cool deck of cards in my personal opinion um one that i'll probably hold on to uh but you know sometimes that's the kind of thing that i like to take with me on trips where i know we might have some downtime or some like non-screen time or non-electricity time so, but i think that's a really kind of fun deck to pull out of your uh, back pocket so let's go ahead and get to our next one which was on page 75 so not too far along later, which was nice. Sometimes it's really great to have that. You can kind of flip through and see when the next gift is and that kind of keeps you reading because you, instead of like saying, oh, I'm gonna read two more chapters, it's like, I'm gonna read until the next gift. So let's see, it says, I brought my gaze back to him. As he worked, he had leaned closer to me, a glow on his cheeks. He straightened again, then stood. Well, he finessed one spot more, then turned the canvas around. I laughed even while my forehead creased and I fought the urge to run from embarrassment. You've removed all my underclothes, but not the outer. I wanted to show you unrestrained. I see you more freely. So this is the moment where we've met one of the love interests, like the main love interest that drives a lot of the story. And he has decided to paint her like one of his French girls. So everybody thinks she's French. We don't know if she's necessarily French. In the book, she's actually from La Nouvelle Orléans uh, or New Orleans. But uh, so everybody thinks she's French and uh, this artist that she has met has decided to sketch her and then eventually turn it into a painting. And it does wind up being a painting that she keeps with her throughout her life. Uh, so it's like the inspiration that Jenny L. Walsh, Walsh was talking about there and that image that we saw. Now, this is weird to me because because this is for one for example what I consider a paper gift from Once Upon a Book Club which sometimes is like a letter that is already typed out in the book so I don't need it in letter form a uh, tangible letter form in a box because it's kind of useless this is one where they not only did we get the image in the book but then they decided to give us another image and I was really thinking that for this particular one they could have given us a blank sketch pad like something that was a little bit more useful um, so it's page 75 and it came just in this brown paper pouch and it is indeed a print. It's kind of a sketch. It's just weird to me that like they gave us another sketch that doesn't even match the one that's in the book that is the inspiration for the book. So here it is. And again, she's a lot more like voluptuous than I imagined the character the way she was described. It's not quite accurate to the way she was described because she was described as being behind a table because she feels a little bit safer behind a table, uh, a little bit more herself when she's dealing cards. She is, it's very hard to see, but it does look like she has some uh, dice with her. But in this case, there's actually three in the image that's in the book that she's referencing there's five but in the the game that they use for that uh, there's three so this is a little bit more accurate in that way and that there's three dice versus five uh, that there are in the image in the book but at the same time it's not accurate because she is not behind a table and it's like it's very 
it's a weird gift because what am I gonna do honestly with this because it's not the kind of thing that I'm gonna put up in my home it's like very sketch like I like sketch art but to it's not the kind of thing that you would want a print of unless it was like an original it didn't honestly add that much to me in terms of my experience of the book because I would rather just imagine the sketch in my mind um, and then of course this is the sketch and then we've already seen like kind of the finished painting it's just not like a very functional gift to me it's not the kind of thing that i i necessarily appreciate because then i honestly feel kind of bad throwing it away so that's not like my favorite kind of gift um that was a little bit disappointing but let's move on to the next one which is on page 197 so it says, this is much later, and now she is no longer Simone Jules. She is now officially Madame uh, Eleanor Dumont. And it says, I shook my head, mischie mischievousness on my face. These men are not normal men. They're fortune seekers. You should know that by now. And by now, every one of them knows their odds of striking it rich through gold or at my table are not in their favor. Here, Yet here they are. I won't downplay it. I'll use it as they puff out their chests and think they'll be the one to beat the odds. He'd begun smirking halfway through my explanation. Well, please, Madame Dumont, don't let me stand in your way. In that moment, I felt as if no one could, and I rolled the dice. So this is where the uh, painter sort of imagined her one day running a game that included dice, and this is kind of a weird moment of fruition where she's like, here I am running this game that involves dice, um, which is, I think it's called like chuck-a-luck or something. So anyway, this is our corresponding gift and it came all wrapped up it's kind of fun to like receive a gift mine seems to be rattling around a little bit so i will open this as carefully as possible so that you can see the contents so what they did was like now i don't mind a deck of cards but what they did is they gave us the actual like a kind of like a boxed version of the game this dice game and then sort of with the uh, instructions printed on the interior now if you have like a game shelf in your house i guess you could add that but like i don't so for me this was just a very like uh space consuming item so it says chuck a luck on it and it kind of looks like a book so it could look kind of cool like if you put it on your bookshelf or your game shelf for sure and it's got like that kind of old west feel and then it says try your luck and then inside again i'm gonna move some of these things because they've fallen out it says how to play and it gives you the instructions and then it does have three wooden dice and then it's got a little like you know con container so that you can shake the dice in it so this is what that looks like and then it has two stacks of these little coins that say chuck a luck on them with a mustache so this is definitely like made custom for the book i'm not sure how you would use these because you're supposed to place bets um on what the numbers are going to come up on uh on the die and this is kind of like a mouse pad material so kind of nice that it like rolls out but then it rolls up into a smaller space i just don't think they needed that big of a box for you know like they could have been a paper fold out for like three die and then this like little container that you you know roll the die in and shake it out and it's just not something that i would necessarily use and honestly i don't know how you would use these chips because like you would have to like have everybody placing bets, but it would have to be the same amount of a bet um, so that they would actually work like chips because there's no differentiation, they all look the same, and there's only 10 of them. So if you were playing and make placing bets, it wouldn't necessarily work. So for me, that was kind of like a not super exciting gift. And then we have one more which came on page 218, and then there were still like another, you know, 80 pages says the hair on Gerald's face was stuck between clean shaven and a beard. He reeked of alcohol, the smell even greater than the nearby li livestock. His clothing was the same as the evening before. I'd put him in his 40s, but he wasn't aging well. Bonjour. I did not break stride. However, I twisted my parasol to my other side to keep an eye on him. So this was the most exciting gift to me. I was like hoping we wouldn't get like a frilly parasol, but it came in this box. It says page 218 on it, and it does have some mustaches on it. Mustaches. And I'll go ahead and open it up so this is the most functional item in the entire box except for the deck of cards and it is indeed an umbrella it's kind of a funny one though because it's like this um white and black polka dots it does have the little sleeve
sleeve that you can make sure you know it doesn't get things wet it's got the curved handle to it which I thought was kind of like funny and like not like the most ergonomic thing to have like in your purse because otherwise it's one of those really like flat ones that does like pack well into a purse so I just wish it didn't have this giant like hook although I guess it could be useful in terms of hanging it on like a door or something but I think the white and black polka dots is super duper cute doesn't seem very like authentic to the time I would have guessed that we'd just get like something more solid but I thought this was the most functional item I'm not gonna open it up because that would be bad luck and this this book is all about luck but you guys let me know what you thought about it if you have a chance to read this book not my favorite particular box great book selection however and I'm definitely looking forward to diving into the next one I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing